the standard World War II Jeep was produced by Willys Overland as the Model MB and by Ford as the GPW. When the production of Jeeps started in the summer of 1941, they were all produced by Willys. When the Army decided Willys production was not sufficient for wartime needs, they led a second contract to Ford in November of 1941. The MB and GPW are externally almost identical, but there were many small differences. Every Jeep left the factory with a set of data plates riveted to the passenger side dash panel, or later, the glove box door. Even though the content was standardized by the Army, Willys and Ford were able to identify which company made the Jeep, give its serial number, date of delivery, and other info. The plates, like the ones illustrated, tell you right away if you're looking at a Willys MB or Ford GPW. So all done, right? No, not really. The original data plate may be long gone, replaced multiple times by owners during restoration projects. The cleaner and neater the plate looks, the less likely it is the original. Some owners are concerned with authenticity, but not everyone. The plate may say what the owner would like the Jeep to be, but maybe not what it actually is or was. As you watch more of this video, you will learn of definite and specific indications of the Jeep's identity, no matter what the data plate says. The first 25,800 Willys MB Jeeps used a grill made of vertical welded steel slats. In the first months of 1942, when Ford began production of the supposedly identical GPW, they had an innovation, the stamped grill. It was much cheaper to produce and was adopted as the standard for both Willys and Ford by April 1942. If you see a slat grill, it's an early production Willys MB. Early production Jeeps had either Ford or Willys stamped on the left rear body panel. By mid-1942, the Army asked them to stop, not wanting the free advertising for the companies to appear on official Jeeps. A front cross member can tell you if you're looking at a Willys frame or a Ford frame. On the Willys MB, like the one in the top photo, the front cross member is a piece of tubular steel, round in cross section. On the Ford GPW, the channel is an inverted U-shape, flat on the top, open on the bottom. Some GPWs had frames made by Willys. GPWs with Ford frames can be identified by extra holes in the front bumper in line with the frame rails. The Willys frames do not have those holes. Another thing to look at is the toolbox in the rear wheel well. Each Jeep has two, one on each side. The Willys MB has a flat lid with a round recess for the latch button. The Ford GPW has an embossed lid with a rectangular recess. However, by 1944, identical bodies were being built for both Willys and Ford by the same subcontractor, American Central Body. These so-called composite bodies all had the round latch recess, but Willys and Ford each installed their own style lid as seen on this GPW. On the Ford GPW, many individual parts were marked with a script F, even down to the level of individual bolt heads. This was Ford's attempt to ensure that parts supplied by Ford could be identified later if there was a problem. The script F on this pintle hook is quite large and easy to see. The mark is more subtle on other parts and may even be covered when the Jeep is assembled. Willys MB parts had no unique markings. A few more things to look for. The machine gun mounting post was reinforced by a plate. 
but the plates differ in shape for MB and GPW. Engine block serial numbers start with MB or GPW to identify Willie's or Ford origin. The MB frame had a small riveted serial number tag on the inner side of the left rail at location number one. The Ford GPW frame had the serial number stamped into the top of the left frame rail at location number two. Later production Willie's frames had a larger serial number tag in the same location. The toe board gussets are two triangular brackets used to attach the front of the body tub to the frame rails. You can see the driver's side gusset in this Willie's factory photo. Gussets were different designs for MB and GPW bodies. The body tub serial number, if any, will be stamped on the driver's side gusset. A list of differences between the Willys MB and the Ford GPW goes on and on, with decreasing significance. Many small distinguishing features merged when composite bodies came into use in 1944, but the biggest factor in confusing the original identity of Jeeps was the practice of mixing parts when Jeeps were repaired or rebuilt by the military. It meant that few Jeeps remained pure to factory specs or to their original configuration. At first glance, the Willys MB and the Ford GPW appear identical. But as you learn more, you find that there are many differences. This video has identified some of the most important ways by which you can tell the two Jeeps apart. There are many more distinctions that were there from the start or that developed over time as the number of Jeeps manufactured grew. However, from the perspective of today, you have to proceed carefully. Willys MB and Ford GPW Jeeps were one thing when they left the factory. But during the war, many Jeeps were repaired or rebuilt in the field using whatever parts were available. In the decades after the war, an endless mix of surplus military parts, CJ parts, aftermarket parts, and reproductions were used and abused. What you might find on a Jeep today might be original or it might be almost anything.